Welcome back to the channel. I'm some dungeon guy and today we're going to be covering an incarnate map essential. It's all about being basic. If you don't want your map to be basic, it's time to throw some shade. That's right, we're talking about shading your incarnate maps to make a more dynamic impression on your players. All right, before we get into the nitty gritty of it, I'm gonna start with a map, best I can, that is symmetrical so you can see the difference of shading on the left and non-shading on the right. Hopefully that'll give you the impression of how important shading of your maps can be. All right. You can see here we have a map. It's relatively symmetrical, right? We've got towns and cities on both sides. We've got some uh, rocks forming some obstacles out in the ocean. Uh, we've got some winter scenes up top. Now, your standard map, this is pretty much functional, right? You've got cities, you've got roads, You've got mountains, trees, water sources, everything you need to make a decent map. And that's fine. If you want to play with a decent map, great. If you want to bring your map to the next level, let's talk about some shading, okay? Come on. Let's go. Now, the first thing I like to do is I like to get my grass looking how I like my grass looking. Now, I'm gonna make a few changes here and there, and these are certainly optional. It's like my texture to be a little more fine. Um, some big things we're gonna play with today are gonna to be the transparency level, which you can control with the hotkeys, as well as brush size and the shape of the actual brush. Now, the shape of the brush will come into play uh, a little bit later on, but for now. So, first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna, we're gonna shade all the spots on one side, okay? So, we're changing that basic grass texture Okay, now this grass texture on the right, perfectly fine. Like I said, you can play with that. None of your players are maybe not even notice. But if, again, if you wanna bring it to the next level, if you wanna make full colored printouts uh, and really have them stand out, this is, this is what I suggest, okay? So we're starting with the ground and obviously we got some uh, wintry mix up top. Uh, so I'm gonna choose the snowy and bright. Now, notice that we're changing the opacity, opacity opacity down. Uh, I'm going to start with half, okay? So notice how it's going to give you a layer and I'm lifting just a little bit as I click my mouse through, okay? So what that's going to do is every pass, notice I'm switching down that opacity. Every pass is going to make each one you've already done a little bit darker, okay? So now we've kind of gone up into the mountainous region. Uh, now we're going to add a little texture or shading uh, a little further down. Okay, so we're still on this really light opacity. Let's take it up just a little bit. Okay, just a little bit past half. I'm just going to outline my mountains. Okay, hit the mountains. I get the stuff under the mountains because in a little while you might decide, man, I really wanted to move those mountains. Okay, I'm going to go a little big here. No harm in going big. Come back and hit those just a touch. Okay. Again, it's gonna make sense shortly. Now, the next thing I like to do is uh, I'll change it to a star pattern. Now the star pattern, I'm gonna make it a little smaller. And again, we're gonna bring down that opacity just a little. And always be careful when you're when you're shading. Really careful up here in the top where your size of their roughness of the texture is right so you can see if we do this one it's got a certain amount of roughness to it if i were to do it really big it comes out real chunky right so i like to go somewhere in the middle start with a 10 and see how that looks okay notice we're on the brown so we're just gonna kind of outline where we had it a second ago right and notice that our land is sort of fading into the other side just a little Drop that opacity down to another lap, okay? Now, notice you still get those big chunky patterns, but don't worry, we're gonna take care of some of those. We're gonna switch our brushes back. And again, we're on that lighter opacity setting. Now, notice I'm swiping and clicking a couple of times, okay? Because you can sort of paint, right? Which is fine, but it only darkens each time you lift up and set down the mouse button, so. Notice it's going to give you a little bit of choppiness in these textures, but not so much that it becomes obnoxious now. Okay, we're just going to kind of graze it up in here one more time. OK, 
Okay. All right. So see how it's coming together already? We've already got, uh, we've already got a little bit better than I was, you might hope. Again, comparing the sides. Now, we've gotten some land, so that's good. Now, our roads, people put in roads, the black line is fine, especially for world maps. I'm really good with total world maps if you just, just slap a road down, right? Because you're not gonna get a whole lot of detail if you're looking, uh, especially at a big continent or anything. But for these smaller maps, regionals and definitely world maps, or uh, battle maps, I'm sorry, uh, we're gonna, I like to highlight my roads. Now again, I'm gonna take that opacity down a little bit, um, down to 0.6, and just kind of trace the line. Right. Decide you don't like it, just undo it. Control Z. Okay. Boom. Now, back up, it gives us a better, more outlined or uh, more highlighted version of the road. And just like that, you can see where this is coming together, right? I take that same color brown, and I'm going to move my brush up to, let's say, a 20. Okay. Zoom in a little. Now, Incarnate has a couple features that will change the color of the inside of the coastline now and it does a fine job it absolutely does i on the other hand i'm a little anal retentive about my about my coastline so i'm going to take that 0.6 opacity brush and i'm just going to kind of paint the coast and notice i'm getting my cursor directly on the coastline okay this comes into play a little bit more in a little while okay and i'm just going to paint it up now you don't have to do all of them Okay, you can do some of them this way. Notice, it doesn't matter if you're perfectly smooth or anything. I'm gonna taper it off at the top. Now, what that's given us is a nice defined coastline. Now, if I were to skip some spots, that would give us the impression the grass just sort of goes into the ocean. Now, for that extra depth of color that we're looking for, I'm gonna choose one. You gotta be careful. Some of these have like rigid textures in them, okay? But I'm gonna choose one of these sand options. I'm going to shrink my brush size on the left down to about half, okay? And I'm going to up my opacity just a notch, okay? Now, once again, tracing, yeah, you know, sometimes this can be a little tedious, but there's a certain zen in the art of map making, at least from what I could find. So again, we're not looking to be perfect here, all right? Just kind of tracing it with your cursor. Okay, and the softness of the brush on the left-hand side is going to kind of fade it out so it's not such a stark line. So definitely keep that. Now up here, I might do it a little heavy because, you know, I've got a port, so it's possible they have more beachy terrain there. Maybe that's why they chose it in the first place. And again, I can swipe over it a few times, and now suddenly I have beaches near my coast. All right, coming up, we're just going to... You know, hold my mouse down for the majority of it so I don't darken it too much. But as you can tell now, now I have a three-dimensionally textured coastline. And again, skip a couple of these sections and it, it gives the impression of a flatter ground. Raise it up like this, you can almost see the sand dunes going up into a uh, like the grassy knoll and almost gives it the impression of a small cliff line, right? Boom. Just that easy. How nice is that? All right, so really, we're talking about shading, look how easy that was. Just a couple of minutes, our coastline, our mountains suddenly pop and have more depth. Now, on to the big one, the ocean, yeah. Well, now the ocean you can do a hundred different ways. Again, you leave it just like this, it is perfectly fine. It is, it's, it's just not gonna bother you, maybe. Um, I, on the other hand, like to think of the ocean as deep and shallow with, you know, the rocks jutting out of the shallower parts. And obviously you're going to have a little deep section. Maybe that's why they chose the port. Now, that makes me choose the shadow color, which is um, <clears throat> black. So uh, I'm going to I'm gonna down my opacity this time. Sometimes I go really dark and try to shade it out. But switch it to background. But this time I'm going to try to go the other way. We're going to... Okay, and I notice I have it on that star pattern up top. That's going to give me the uh, angles a little bit more. And notice as it overlaps, it's going to give you darker sections, right? So, once you've done kind of a, a rough pass, all right, nice and easy, uh, we're going to go back with the other, with the original texture, whatever that texture may be for your water. And again, I'm going to drop that opacity just a notch. 
okay? We're gonna just kind of blend it in, okay? A few swipes and suddenly the rigid, harsh lines of your star brush tool start to go away. And you start to see more of a, a natural pattern to the water, okay? See how that's shaping up kind of nice? And sometimes, as you can tell, sometimes you overdo it just a little, maybe you have to go over it twice. You know what? It's only a couple minutes, especially for water. Now I'm gonna drop my opacity down a little. And maybe even, uh, let's see, oh. We're gonna go to the star tool. We're gonna to drop this down to like eight, okay? Notice. Drop that opacity just another notch. See all that depth of color? Sort of makes that water feel like it's getting deeper than it. And again, just like that, we start to see almost a cloud formation in the water. Now the corners, maybe they're going off the map, so I'll drag those up a little bit. No real wrong answers here. Shrink it down. I'm gonna do a couple of little, couple of little passes right in front of those port cities. You figure they're building the port there for some reason. And you're on that star pattern, so it's gonna give us more of a jagged appearance. You don't like your water that dark? That's fine. Yeah, you don't have to bring it. You don't have to make it too dark. Just like that, we can lighten it up a notch. Okay. Maybe I'll uh, maybe hit the area just around these. All right, we're gonna drop that down just a smidge. We're gonna see. I'm just gonna tap it on there. Okay. Now. The next step I like to do is I like to take some of the shallow C. I'm going to shrink my brush. This one I'm going to bring it back to the round. Eh, maybe I'll keep it on the star. Up that opacity just a little bit. And you can start your opacity in one place and take it up during, during each stroke if you need to. Again, feel free to go back over it as many times as you need. down a little. All right, so with that star tool, again, we get those jagged edges. I'm just gonna pop back over with a real light coating of the original water texture. Maybe not quite so light yet. Yeah. And suddenly you can see how you have shipwrecks and things like that, right? And we're just kind of blend it in here just a little bit. And again, goal here is make it not quite so jagged. Okay. Now, just a few minutes in and suddenly Suddenly our map starts to take a few, right? We have the new modified shaded map. And we have the original map. Now, both are perfectly fine to play with, but you know, which one do you want to look at? Really personal preference. Now I'm gonna pop back up to the uh oops. I'm gonna pop back up to the map up top. And we're just gonna give this a little bit more since that is icy, right? Nice icy C. Uh, right now I'm only using the Fantasy Regional HD Asset Pack. A lot of times I'll mix and match them. If you click here, and you can actually find some ice textures, which will give you a little bit of icing on right around the coastline. It sort of gives you that impression of uh, you know, truly being cold. All right, so we're gonna go to, let's say, let's say ice here. Up that opacity just a smidge. 
Yeah, you're painting the coast. Just a little. All right. Look at that. Now, does that look like a tropical location? Does it look like it blends several different terrains? Yeah, look at that. All that with just a few minutes worth of shading. And as you get better at it, you can do the whole world at a time. You can do parts of it. It's really up to you. But there you have it. A little bit of shading goes a long way. So whenever you want your maps to be less basic, throw some shade. Well, that just about wraps us up. I'm some dungeon guy. Thank you for watching my channel. As always, like and subscribe for more content. And please drop a comment below. Give me an idea of what sort of videos and topics you'd like covered in the future. And as always, thanks for watching.